Grade 8 math number 13.3a, we're talking about the volume of a sphere in this unit, and we're going to do modeling the volume of a sphere. So the pH makes an F sound. A sphere is a three-dimensional figure shaped like a ball, and all the points that make up its surface are the same distance from the center. They're equidistant. Each is a radius of the sphere, so it doesn't matter what direction you're going in, from the center to the edge, they're all a radius. They're all radii in every direction, even for the height. So we could do a radius from the center down and then continue it up, and that would be the diameter, wouldn't it? Because two radii equal a diameter, and the diameter of a sphere can be found in any direction, two radii are equal to the height. It doesn't matter what direction we come out from the center, Every single point is going to be a radius. If we cut it in half, half of a sphere is a hemisphere. And you know what that's like? That's like our Earth. So I've got this globe, and the equator cuts our Earth right down the middle. See? There's a blue line, and it runs all the way around the Earth. See, it goes through the top of South America. And if we look over here, we can see it goes above Australia and it continues all the way around the whole globe. See? So I put this pink paper here so we could see the equator. Above the equator is the northern hemisphere, half of the sphere, and below it is the southern hemisphere, the southern half of our sphere. See? It's just a big ball. Actually, this point running diagonally through our Earth like that, that's our axis. And you'll come across that in geometry in the future, too. All right, so we're going to put this away, and I want to show you something else. I got some tie twists, and what I did was I made them all the same distance from the center because I folded them in half and then twisted it around. See how I twisted them around so they would come out like this, like a starburst. And if we were to cover this with plastic or tissue paper or whatever, we could make a ball, couldn't we? And every single one of these line segments pointing out from the tie twist could be a radius, and two of them could be the height. See? We could find the height from the entire distance across the diameter. See that? All right. So, in video 13.2a, we saw that a cone had one-third the volume of a cylinder when they had the same height and radius. And there's going to be a link in the description of this video to that one if you haven't seen it. I really wish people would watch my videos in order because I tell something new in each one. And if you watch them in order, you can follow along very easily, okay? So what we did was we had a cone and we filled it with rice and we poured it into the cylinder and we found, because they had the same height and radius, that the cone had one-third the volume of the cylinder. Well, if a cylinder and a sphere had the same height and radius and we filled the sphere with rice, it would fill the cylinder two-thirds full. A sphere has two-thirds the volume of a cylinder. And the cylinder's height is equal to the diameter of the sphere. So we saw in the last video that the volume for a cylinder is pi r squared h, and that r squared is the base and the h is the height. Well, for the cone, we stuck a one-third in front of the pi. For a sphere, we stick a two-thirds in front of it because the cone is one-third the volume of the cylinder and the sphere is two-thirds the volume of the cylinder. That's why they're there. So we're going to do it again, and I'm going to show you what happened. So we have a cone, and it's got the exact same diameter and radius as our cylinder, and it's got the exact same diameter and radius as our sphere. See, I took half the sphere off. So if we were to put these together, see that? And half of it has the same diameter and radius as our cylinder. And we could even tell from the base because all the bases fit each other. See that? So we took a cone in that video and we filled it up and we poured it into our cylinder. And I actually used a purple paper cone and a glass in that one. And look at what we got. It's one-third full. See that? It fills the cylinder one-third full, that, cylinder, that cone. See how that happened? And they have the same height. Look at that. They're the same height 
and they have the same diameter and radius. See that? Filled it up one third of the way. That's why the formula's got a one third there. Now watch what happens when we do a sphere. Now I can't take this ball and fill it with rice and pour it in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to do half of it and then half of it, okay? And then that'll be the whole sphere. So I'm going to take half the sphere and I'm going to pour it in here. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm making a mess here, spilling it. So I got my little dish here. And look what happens. It filled it two-thirds of the way with rice. See that? That's why the formula has a two-thirds pi r squared h there. See? It filled it one-third, it filled it two-thirds. Isn't that cool how that worked out? And because this filled it one-third of the way and a full sphere filled it two-thirds of the way, this cone is half of that sphere and that sphere is twice as much as that cone in volume. See that? You can even see it in the numbers. Because the height of a sphere is its diameter, its height is always 2r. If that's the radius, then two of them is its diameter. That's its height. The height is equal to 2r. We can substitute that 2r for the h for height and then simplify it. So we had volume equals 2 thirds pi r squared h right here. And we're going to take out the h and we're going to put the 2r, the 2 radius, for h instead. See? And we're going to combine and simplify, all right? Now, do you remember the product rule of exponents in the beginning of eighth grade? It's video number 2.1c, and there is going to be a link in the description of this video for you to just click on that if you don't know about it. If we've got r2 and r, remember there's an invisible one there, our, our buddy the invisible one. So there's one r and there's two r's. And because they have like bases, we just add the exponents. So that would be three r's. If we've got r times r times r, that's three r's. It's r to the third power. That's r cubed. So now, instead of having this r squared and this r, we have r cubed. Now, we need to multiply two thirds times this two, because they're like terms. Two thirds times two is four thirds. So now our formula says v is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's the formula we can use. Now, the cylinder, cone, and sphere that has the same radius and height, the cone will be one third the volume of the cylinder, and the sphere is going to be double the volume of the cone, and the cone is going to be half the volume of the sphere, okay? And that's why we had the one third and two thirds there. But now you know for the volume of a sphere, we can do 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay? Either way, you could do it this way, or you could do it this way, all right? But this is the most used, all right? So we're going to continue on, and we're going to actually use the volume formula for a sphere in a problem. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you're okay. Keep your chin up. Remember, don't quit. It's like playing a video game. Just because you can't beat a level, you don't quit. You try again, right? So, good luck, and I'll see you next video. Bye.